and welcome to today's edition of the OHSU Effect Inside Health and Science. Right now, we're going to dive into child behavior issues, something all of us can relate to even if we're not parents. With me is Dr. Kurt Freeman, the director of the Behavioral Pediatrics Treatment Program at OHSU. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yes. So you direct, like I said, the Behavioral Pediatrics Treatment Program. So what exactly is that program for? Yeah, I do direct that program. That program is designed to assist families um, who have um, children with child-rearing difficulties that fall into what we typically call the well-child gap. And let me just briefly explain that. Um, in, in our society, we're fortunate that in uh, most cases, children see a pediatric health care worker, and that provider is designed to not only help with medical care, but also with um, anticipatory guidance, what to expect from children, emotional, behavioral development, and so forth. But we know that that system has some limitations whereby they just, uh, providers often don't have the time to really help family with families with those issues. And so children can fall into this well-child gap. They don't really need intensive mental health service, but they need a little bit more than what their pediatric provider can offer them. And our behavioral pediatrics treatment service is designed to meet that gap. So tell us about the children best served through this program. So in this program, we serve youth um, all the way from infancy up to uh, adolescence and even some young adults. And we serve children with um, and without developmental or medical conditions. We really take all comers as long as their issues um, for which their families or they are seeking assistance with meet our um, criteria for what we are best to help with. Yeah, I mean, talk more about those issues. Sure. So we um, provide services that fall into four general categories. The first category is what I would call routine child rearing challenges that are frustrating and difficult for parents to address, and really um, their families need a little bit of help to improve. So that would be things like bedtime difficulties, picky eaters, difficulty um, with compliance, listening skills, those types of issues. So these are kids who are generally doing okay, but their parents need a little help kind of fine tuning some of their strategies to address those kinds of difficulties. The next category that we work with is toileting issues, and that's actually where we see most of our patients. These are children with delayed toilet training. They're just struggling to master those skills. Or maybe they have um, a diagnosable condition like enuresis or bedwetting or incapricis or soiling. We know that both of those conditions have a biological component, but often the most effective treatment is a behavioral treatment. And we can help families and children with those issues really improve um, successfully. The third category is for children with tick disorders and other habit problems. So um, while ticks are biologically based, we know that behavioral interventions can be effective for improving them. We also know that people can display a variety of problematic habits like skin picking, hair pulling, um, excessive thumb sucking or nail biting that's causing a problem. And we know how to help kids with those issues. So it kind of sounds, though, like you deal with the whole family, though, not just the child. We do. And that really will vary depending on the age of the child. Um, certainly with younger children, their parents being involved is very critical to the success of treatment. In fact, we may be doing most of the treatment through the parents. As kids get older, they're increasingly involved. Um, but we're likely to inc continue to have care providers such as parents or other important people involved, even with adolescents and possibly young adults, because we know that often having um, some support and assistance to put into place the behavioral interventions is really critical. So you said you meet with children uh, of all ages, uh, but why is it important to address these issues early in a child's life? Certainly. So the types of issues that I mentioned that we help with can really be quite frustrating for children and families and, in fact, can be a little demoralizing for kids. Imagine that you're eight and you're still wetting the bed and you feel like you're the only one who's doing that. You can't go on sleepovers. Um, you're worried about people coming to your house and spending the night, that's really frustrating and difficult. And so while we know that this is not an emotionally based problem, we know that these kinds of issues can actually cause emotional difficulties. And so we want to help before that happens, or even if it's starting to happen, make sure we take care of it so that it doesn't continue. Because often if these problems persist for longer and longer, then it becomes more and more difficult for children to um, cope with their feelings about these issues and manage themselves. Yes, and then that can bleed over into other aspects of their lives. Absolutely, absolutely. So can you kind of give us some examples of, of ways that you, you treat these issues? Sure. So it's a, um, each kind of area of issue is going to be different because they're all really quite different interventions. 
Let me take one example. So kids who have tic disorders like Tourette syndrome or a chronic motor or vocal tic, um, we know that medications can help with those, but people often are either not interested in using medicines or they want something in addition to medicines. And so we use a, an effective treatment that's empirically based called habit reversal, where we teach kids to be really aware of their um, tics and then to engage in some specific strategies when they have the ticks occur that we know actually decrease the frequency of ticks over time. So that's one example. Well, when should a parent seek help? Are there, we know we throw around this term warning signs, right. but is there anything like that? So that's a really good question, and it is certainly going to be an individual issue. My rule of thumb is let's work on these things before they get too difficult or too overwhelming for families. My goal is to actually reach children and families before they've become so distressed that it's overwhelming or affecting functioning in other areas of their life, like their friendships or their willingness to go to school or whatnot. So I, what I would say is that if parents um, feel like they're, the strategies that they're using to support their children aren't quite enough, um, that they feel like um, they just need some guidance, then that's a really good time to come. In fact, it's better to come then rather than waiting until things have really gotten difficult for them or their children. Do you recommend uh, parenting classes or anything like that if they're kind of on the lower end of the spectrum when it comes to maybe like the bedwetting or, or bedtime issues? I mean, is parenting classes something that can help these families as well? Parenting classes certainly can be very helpful in lots of instances. Um, and the helpfulness of those kinds of classes is really going to depend on whether the class is set up to address the issues for which the parent is having concerns. My experience has been when programs offer parenting classes, those tend to be focused on that first category of issues that I mentioned, the routine child rearing difficulties like not listening, those types of issues. And so I think parenting classes can be really helpful for that if people are offering classes that talk about empirically supported interventions for improving those difficulties. I think that's hard for parents to know what is it the right class to go to are what the folks saying, excuse me, is what are the issues that the, um, the treatment providers are talking about, is that really the right way to treat these issues? What I tend to do with families is give them some reading resources um, that we do know are empirically based to help support the things that we talk about if um, I'm working with families, or certainly even if folks want to have access to that and they're not working with me, we make that available. Now, you do a lot of research in ADHD as well. Do you see a lot of that bleeding over into the kids you treat at the Behavioral Pediatrics Treatment Center? So in, in our um, area, we will see children who have um, co-occurring um, chronic health conditions like ADHD, as long as their is the issues for which they're seeking support from us fall into the categories that we address. We know that having um, ADHD or other similar conditions puts you at risk for some kinds of issues like um, increased noncompliance, um, uh, increased difficulty going to bed, and so forth. And so certainly we, we will see kids with those conditions, but we are not a, a program that's exclusive to children who have that. Sure, sure. Well, how can parents get in touch with you or where can they find more resources if this is something they think they need? Right. So through the Dornbecker Children's Hospital webpage, you can link to the Behavioral Pediatrics Treatment Program webpage. And on there, we describe the types of um, children's issues that we most effectively address. We talk about the patient's um, that we're um, best to treat with and the kinds of treatments that we offer. Also, if families are interested in calling our intake line, they certainly can call 503-418-8236 and talk with Nona, who's our intake and scheduler um, extraordinaire, and she will be happy to provide more information or link you with me if folks have more questions. Great. Well, perfect. Dr. Kurt Freeman, Director of the Behavioral Pediatrics Treatment Program at OHSU, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And don't forget, you can get that phone number and more information at ohsueffect.org. You can also get podcasts of the show there as well. And if there's a health topic you'd like us to cover, you can send me an email, lacey.evans at kxl.com, or follow me on Twitter at Lacey Evans. Send me your suggestions. Also, we are having a contest here at the OHSU Effect. We're giving away tickets to Body Worlds and the Brain, an all-new exhibit at OMSI running now through early March. Just go to kxl.com and click on the banner where you can enter to win. Coming up in five minutes on the OHSU Effect, a doctor from Dornbecker Children's Hospital who specializes in the treatment of complex heart problems. After that, we'll talk to an expert on obesity and bariatric
bariatric surgery. And then at 8.50, a doctor who is working on diagnosing autism in infants. More of the OHSU effect next on FM News 101 KXL.